This is Gretchen Men for Acoustic Guitar, and today we're going to be starting to talk about the elements of rhythm. So music, by its very nature, is an art form that takes place in time, and therefore nothing is more fundamental to it than the temporal aspect. And yet it's something that is so greatly overlooked as guitar players. We have a tendency to fall into familiar patterns, to not be very good at um, reading rhythms, and to have a hard time conveying our ideas around rhythm. So investing a little bit of time in understanding the subject and then applying that knowledge to your guitar will open up a lot of creative doors and it'll make you a much more confident player. Okay, so first some basic terminology. Beat is the basic pulse of music. And if it's something that's unfamiliar to you, a good way to determine the beat in music is listen to some music and just tap your hand or your foot along. You'll naturally find where that beat is. Tempo specifically is how quickly those beats take place. And it's usually written into the music like at the beginning with a directive like lento, which means slow, or allegro, which is moderately fast, or presto, which is very fast. Or it can also be shown more precisely through a metronome mark, which is beats per minute, which is abbreviated BPM. So meter refers to the grouping of beats into measures. And measures are shown by a vertical line on the staff. There are lots of different types of meters, but some of the most common are duple, and those are two beats in a measure um, with the first beat having a particular sense of weight. So duple meter would be counted like one, two, one, two, one, two. Triple meter, as the name implies, has three beats per measure counted one, two, three, one, two, three. Quadruple meter, which is so common that it's actually also known as common time, is counted one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And those can happen in any variety of tempos. So there are tons of different meters, but once you really understand the concept around the most simple and fundamental meters, the more complex structures will be much more available and understandable. So meter is depicted at the beginning of a piece of music by what is called a time signature, and that's two numbers that are arranged vertically. It's not a fraction, it's a different thing. So the top number indicates how many beats are to be in each measure, and the bottom note indicates which duration of note is one beat. So for example, 4-4 four, four is notated also as C, common time like we said, but it means that there are four beats per measure, the top number, and the bottom number, meaning the quarter note, receives one beat. And then similarly, like 2-2 two, two means there are two beats per measure with the half note receiving one beat. So now let's talk a little bit about note duration so you can understand what quarter notes and half notes mean. Okay, so in example one, we're going to start looking at how some basic note values are represented visually. You can pick any note here. I just chose C randomly, um, but it could be any note, any chord. The idea is more that you can focus on the rhythms and not be worrying about pitch yet. So example one, we start with a whole note. In 4-4, four, four, that's going to be four beats. And if you count off one, two, three, four, it'll sound like one two, three, four. A whole rest is the same amount of time while not playing. But it is important to actually pay attention to rest. The rest is not like a little mental break you get to take. Try to own the rest with the same authority that you'll own the note. Rhythm by its definition is the combination of sounds and silences. So really try to play the silences. So a whole rest. One, two, three. Next, a half note is half the duration of a whole note, and that would be counted one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that was the half note with the half rest following it. Now for quarter notes, those are, they're going to be counted one per beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two quarter notes plus two quarter rests. Eighth notes, as you may now have figured out, are going to be half the duration of quarter notes. So you're going to actually be playing two per beat. So at the tempo, one, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. I count them, and m many people count them, one and. One and two and three and four and. So sixteenth notes are going to be four notes per beat. And if you want to play these a little bit slower, that's perfectly fine. You want to count them one E and a two E and a. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. 
16th rest, same way. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So example two shows a tie. A tie connects two notes and the ending duration is the sum of their two durations. So for example, you have a quarter plus an eighth note. So the way that you can then play this on the guitar is what I do is I count the smallest subdivision. So if we're counting eighth notes, I'm going to count one and two and. So you'll play one and two, and then you'll rest on the and of two. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. So the second part of example two shows another tie. You have a half note tied to a quarter note, with the end result being, being three beats. So when you pick, you will let the note ring out for the counts one, two, three, and rest on four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So example three shows dotted notes. So a dot next to a note head indicates that half the note's value is to be added back to itself. So that's best understood with an example. So if you see, like in example three, a dotted quarter note. What that means is you have a quarter note plus an eighth note, which is exactly what we just did in example two, counted exactly the same way. So you're going you're gonna to sustain the note for one and two, rest on the and of two. So one and two and. Similarly, the dotted half note is going to be a half note plus a quarter note. So it will sound exactly the same as the half note tied to the quarter note. So one two, three, four. So in example four, we're actually going to put down our instruments and we're going to make sure we hear and understand these rhythms and then once we do, then we're going to apply them to the guitar. So first what we're going to do throughout this exercise is we're going to designate one hand as our hand to tap the beats, like one, two, three, four. We're in four, four here. And then our other hand is going to tap the notated rhythms. For all of these, we're going to be counting out loud. That's an important part of it. Even if it feels silly, do it. It'll be helpful. So first, we're going to show a whole note and then followed by a whole rest. So what that's going to mean is we're going to tap. I'm using my right hand. You can use your left hand if you're more comfortable. And then we're going to count one, two, three, four for a whole note. So again, here's your beat. One, two, three, four, one two, three, four. The rest will be the same count with your tapping hand and you'll just rest with your other hand. So that whole rest will be rest, two, three, four. So moving on to half notes now. They're going to be counted as a duration of two and then a rest of two. So here's your beat again. One, two, three, four. One, two, rest, four. Now for quarter notes, same thing. We're going to tap on beats one, two, and three with our tapping hand, rest on the fourth beat. So again, four beats first. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest. Okay, so now for eighth notes, if you want to slow down your tapping hand, that's perfectly fine. This is not about going fast. It's about being clear and accurate and understanding it. So we're gonna be counting two left hand taps now for every beat. Um, and we're going to rest on the fourth one. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and rest and. So the last subdivision we're going to look at right now are 16th notes. And I do recommend going as slowly as you need to really feel them. So we're gonna count them one E and a, two E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, rest E and a. Okay, so example four now on guitar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. Half notes now. One, two, rest. No quarter notes. One, two, three, rest. Now eighth notes. One and two and three and rest and. Now sixteenth notes. Go slowly if you need to. 
one E and a two E and a three E and a rest E and a. So now we're going to take a quick look at hearing and really internalizing different meters in example five. So first we're going to count one, two, one, two, and two, two while tapping with our right hand. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Trying to emphasize that one to really hear that grouping of two. Three, four would be one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Four would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then playing those on the guitar would be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And three would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So in example six, we're going to start going through different combinations of 16th note patterns. There are tons you could come up with. I recommend trying different things, but this is just to get you started with some of the more simple ones. So in this first one, we're just going to be tapping on the numbers. So on the one, two, three, four. But we're still going to be counting 16th notes. So counting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So start slowly, pick up the paces you want. The second one, we're going to continue to tap with our right hand, and then we're going to tap on the E. So it will sound like one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. For the third one, we're going to be tapping with our left hand on the ands. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. For the fourth one, we're going to be tapping on the us. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So for the fifth one, we're going to tap on the one E. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So for the sixth one, we're going to tap on the E and. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. In the seventh one now, we're going to tap on the and up. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. On the eighth one, we're going to tap on the beat and on the up. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. On this ninth one, we're going to tap on the one and on the and. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. On the tenth one, we're going to tap on the E and on the A. Uh. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So now example six, as it applies to the guitar. Again, you can pick any note you want, you can pick any chord, and the idea is just to try to really internalize the rhythm. You can also keep your pick moving, I actually suggest you do that, and mute the rests so you can actually really feel that rhythm. So, for example, in the first one, we'll go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So again, tapping your foot. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. For the second one, we're going to be playing with an upstroke now with your pick on the E. So. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. The third one now, we're going to be picking with a downstroke on the and. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now we're going to move to the picking with an upstroke now on the us. So one E and a, two E and a, three E four E and up. Now we're going to be picking on the one E and rest for and up. So 
one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. Now we're going to be picking on the E and and. So one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. So now we're going to be picking on the and us. So one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. Now we're going to pick on the beats and on the us. So one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and. Uh. So now we're going to pick on the beats and on the ands. So one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and. Uh. Um, so now we're just going to be picking on the E and on the a. Uh. So. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. So as always, this is just barely scratching the surface of an absolutely enormous topic. And I know initially stuff like this can seem very tedious. The idea is just to spend a little bit of time with it, start having fun with it, don't overdo it, and just incorporate it more and more into your daily playing. Once you're ready to move up the tempo, move up the tempo, come up with your own exercises. It truly will strengthen your rhythmic understanding and also increase your rhythmic vocabulary, which ultimately will give you new ideas creatively.